Hello everyone and welcome back to yet again another video on another clone device that I recently picked up the other day that I figured I'd make a video on, so here I am making a video on it. Now if we go back to around the start of this year, this clone here was on the market. Now this was the absolutely cheapest clone that you could possibly get. For around 30 US dollars, you could get this clone. This was on eBay, Wish, and all that sort of stuff at the time. The only listing I can find currently is this one on eBay. And it does say that it's got 512 meg of RAM, four gigabytes of storage, but it's got an octa-core processor though. Just, yeah, go figure. So the one I'm about to show you says that it has 32 gigs of storage. It does not. Well, I don't think it does. It could prove me wrong, but we'll see. So here it is in all its glory. You can't really see a lot of it, so I'll just flip it straight over. It's got this nice Ferrari red back cover here, which is quite nice. But this is actually ripping off a Huawei Mate 10 Pro. So I've kind of done the P20 and the P30. I didn't get to the P10 though, so I'm kind of got there with the Mate 10. It's close enough. But yes, this is... $89. Now, I got this from a local pawn shop. Pawn. P-A-W-N. Pawn shop. And this was listed as faulty. Someone had actually purchased this, and then they got rid of it because they knew how shit it was. And then I've somehow ended up with it. But no, I did not pay $89 for it. I'd be out of my mind to pay $89 for it. So I paid $15 Australian, which is like 7 or 8 US or something like that. So it's absolutely worth it. Uh, I have tested this to a certain small extent to make sure that it is working and we can make a video on it. So just making sure. But uh, anyways, let's go around the device and have a look at this uh, Mate 10 clone. Just want to start off here. This bit here sticks out like a sore thumb. And it just, I don't think it does anything, but it's just there. We have a front facing camera there and what looks like a yellow dot, but it's actually a flash and it does actually work. This is about as bright as a dying LED on a Christmas tree. That's how bright it is. We have the screen here, which is about a five inch display. Then we have the Android capacity for buttons here, which as per usual, back, home and menu. So there you go. Flipping it over though, we have this nice red. It's, as I said, Ferrari red, ooh. That means it's gonna go faster. We have holes for the speaker just there, which I think is there. Uh, on the side, we have the power button as well as the volume buttons. And then on the top, we have the micro USB connection as well as a headphone jack, which I greatly appreciate there being a headphone jack. But uh, moving to the back here, you see, uh, yep, yeah, it's got the flash here, dual cameras, yep, yeah, fingerprint sensor, yep. Yeah. Some sort of laser auto-focusing system like on the actual Mate 10 Pro. And yeah, oh no, no. None of that is legit on this thing at all. This was 30 US dollars at one point in its lifetime. Um, it's now 38 US. I'm gonna go ahead and take this sticker off because I think there's a logo under here. Okay, so there's no logo under there. I thought there was, but no, there's not. Um, it's got this fake brushed aluminium sort of thing going here with the cameras. Uh, that's obviously not real. This whole thing is plastic. I'm not gonna do that because I need to actually use it. Uh, yeah, it's just all plasticky. Just stick that back on. But having a look at the cameras there, one is symmetrical and the other one is not symmetrical. I'm going to let you guys guess in the comments which one is actually the legit camera and which one is the fake camera. Which one is the real one and which one's the fake one? No order. Could be any of them. Could be both fake. Don't know. But uh, this here, it's uh, like the P30 Pro. You just pull the back cover off. No SIM card trays or anything like that. Nah, just straight into the back of it. And look what we have here. We have a 3,800 milliamp hour battery. Uh, yeah. And uh, the two cameras there. But see, there's that autofocus. And also, there's no fingerprint. That's just decoration. This battery, sorry, my Australian accent says battery, but it's battery. Can't help it, sorry. Use only UMAX specified charger. Do not throw the battery in fire. Okay. Do not short circuit. Do not put in wet or corrosive surroundings. Okay, well, I'll try not to do any of that. But if I do, I'll let you know. Uh, it's under this battery, though, which is surprising. Oh, we know who this is from. This is another welcome branded device. Oh, man. Haven't we just had fun with the welcome devices? The P20 Pro, the P30 Pro, now the Mate 10 Pro. Yeah. Also, there's um some markings in here too. I didn't notice. 
uh, put battery in the right way and don't throw in the bin. Okay. So this thing here is as thin as a potato chip. It's probably like an 1800 milliamp hour battery or something like that. I'm not too sure. But the thing is, it still works. Model is M10. Dual IMEIs, which, yep. And then we have the little manufacturing date, which 2019. So yes, earlier this year. I was right on the money with that one. Uh, yeah, so earlier this year, I was actually going to buy one for the sake of, you know, doing a whole review and stuff. And I just never got around to it because I thought, ah, there's no point. And then when I got offered this for 15 bucks, I just thought, I'd stuff it. But it is only a 3G model. That is absolutely 100% certain it's a 3G model. But the micro SD card slot's just there and the dual SIMs are just there. So let me go ahead and put a SIM card and an SD card into this device. And we'll power this thing on. Let's see the uh, sheer power of what this thing can do. Not a lot. That's strange. The SD card slot is right above the battery terminals. No worries. Now, there's no diagram on how to put the SIM cards in or anything like that. You just stick them in any old way. It was probably on the instructions that came with this, but obviously because I didn't get the original box instructions and all that sort of stuff, I just guessed. So hopefully it's good. Yes, and I'll also address it in this video as well. Still getting the corrective stuff, which is going to take quite a while. So you'll be used to seeing Band-Aids for a while. Sorry, guys. But anyways, uh, let me clean the screen so it looks less grubby and we'll power this thing on and see what it can do. All right, now that the screen looks less grubby and um, has a few scratches on it, which is fine, let's go ahead and switch this thing on because uh, the startup sound is really nice. It's really soothing and relaxing. See, welcome. Good old welcome. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. This century. Peace, serenity, and everything above. I feel like weight's been lifted off my shoulders now. All right, so it has booted up finally. It has detected my SIM card, and we have 3G connectivity on this thing, and the battery is like 25% when it was at 70% before I started this video. Okay, so we get this nice wallpaper here, which looks nice, beautiful, serene, pristine, and this is it. So, fairly basic. So for me, it kind of looks like it's got sort of this Samsung looking thing up here, like TouchWiz, kind of like 5.1 TouchWiz, but we'll see. Um, pressing the Apps Drawer button, we have Backup and Restore, Browser, Calculator, Calendar, Camera, Clock, Downloads, Email, Face Unlock. But the Face Unlock has these two faces there, which will be interesting to see if it actually works. But it'll just take a picture of my face and go, yep, that's the bloke who owns this phone, so, yep. Facebook, File Manager, Flashlight, FM Radio, Gallery, Google Settings, Messaging, Facebook, Movie Studio, Music, People, hang on, People, yes. Phone, Play Store, Settings, Sim Toolkit, Snapchat, Sound Recorder, To Do, Videos, WhatsApp. I believe Snapchat was left on here from the previous owners uh, because I have not factory reset the device. So, yeah, and I think WhatsApp is default as well. Otherwise, so far, basic, normal applications, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, feels like it's probably going to be running KitKat, maybe, maybe KitKat. It's, I think it says 5.1 in here, but we'll see. Jumping straight into settings, though, we have SIM management, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, no NFC or anything like that. And as you can see, the speed of this phone is truly, truly awesome. Audio profiles is up oh, the best order, best order audio enhancer, which actually does work. It does make things sound a little bit better sometimes, but uh, that thing is always on welcome phones. Always, always, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, the display, which is, yep, theme. Uh, let's see what the themes are. Default, fair. Okay, uh, incoming flash, which this just lights up when you get a notification. That's basically it. And storage says we have 32 gigs of storage. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it has 4 gig. If if by chance it has 4 gig, I'll be happy. But, yep. In battery, though, 36% it's that. I'll put battery percentage on so we can watch it just slowly die. Um, yeah, that's fine. Now we have location, which I'm not going to do. Security. I wonder if it has, like, fingerprint. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, boy. Screen fingerprint time. Here we go. Oh. Can we, can we, uh, I can't do it. 
Oh, that's not fair. That's just silly. I can't test the fingerprint then. Uh, face unlock, I'll use the actual app on the uh, main screen to do that. Voice unlock. We all know what voice unlock is going to be, like the P30 Pro. You just speak into it and it unlocks. Uh, Facebook and Google accounts are logged into it, which, yeah, I'll just turn off soon. Date and time, whatever. Accessibility. Uh, yep, 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 yep. All the usual stuff. Um, and then we come to uh, off-screen gestures, the one you can just, yeah, you can double tap and open things and all that sort of stuff. About phone is, here we are. So it's just M10. Just M10. Baseband version. 8-core. Just, you know, because they have to rub it in that it's an 8-core. So the baseband version usually is just, you know, a bunch of letters and text and all that sort of stuff. No, it's just 8-core. Just 8-core. That's fine. Within status, we see the SIM status and IMEI related information, all that sort of stuff. The serial number, once again, is 01234567899 ABCDF, which is on many devices that I've looked at, which, yep, that's quite normal. But 5.1, see if we can open up the Easter egg. I forgot how to do it. There we go. Lollipop. But this could be just the Easter egg stolen off the Lollipop SDK, put into KitKat. Possibly. All right, so if I can see anything else, build number MT6580, mm, 2018, 25th of the 12th, 2018. Oh, it's almost a year old. Oh, happy birthday, little thing. All right, otherwise, everything else in settings is pretty reasonable. So let's go ahead and... Oh, I forgot to connect to my Wi-Fi network, so I'm going to do that. Sorry, I'm just trying to remove all the uh, apps and stuff that are coming up and notifications and all that sort of bullshit. Um... I love down here, it says 293 meg used, total 32 gig, but look at the, the bar. So if that's 300 meg, let's use um, quick maths. Three, six, nine, 12, maybe two gig, <laughs> maybe, we'll see. All right, successfully connected to the internet. Let's see what we can do on this thing. Let's, let's open browser and see what we can do. If we can actually play YouTube at 144p. Okay, that took a little bit longer than usual. All right, let's see if it loads. Yes, yes, good, good, getting there, there we go, all right, I'll load up my uh, latest video here. Stan, Australia's unrivaled unrivaled I have high hopes for this device, very high hopes. If I spend more on a clone, they might give me something slightly better. The result is YouTube at 360p is just, it doesn't work. Which we all expected that anyways. I would love to know what the Geekbench score will be. That will be interesting. Uh, let me try uh, face unlock, actually. I want to see how bad this looks. These are the two circles. Set it up. The best results. Yep. Okay. Put your face here. All right. Okay. So I've done that. So now all I have to do is just look at the phone. So I'm just going to do that. Face unlock works. So that's good. All right, one more thing I wanted to do in settings is just check if I can do a system update. I don't think there was, was there? There is no system update. Fair. All right, I'm going to try that screen fingerprint again because I have a feeling that once I lock it, it'll just come up with a fingerprint. <laughs> yep. Wow. That was impressively fast. That was even faster than like most flagships man that is just crazy that is crazy ultrasonic optical enhanced satellite navigational gps system working thing going on there that is just absolutely fantastic um yeah well i'm glad that it knows my fingerprint just no words, no words. As usual, we'll do a speaker test just to see the quality of the speakers. Mick Gordon's rip and tear from the 2016 Doom. So let's give it a go and see what it sounds like. It's actually not that loud. Usually they're really loud and distorted and stuff, but no, that's actually really tame, to be honest. It's not too bad. All right, with 24% battery life remaining, what else can we possibly do? Camera, 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 then we'll do specs. There it is. There's my, uh, you can see the top of my 
head there and you can see my setup. So let's go to the rear facing camera. All right, now if you guessed correctly, which one is it? It's not the bottom one, it's the top one. The top one is the real camera, which is slightly crooked and um, has a black dot on the screen, but that's okay, I'll, I'll fix that. Uh, but if we come into here, we have a 16 megapixel, quote unquote, 16 megapixel camera running in this thing, which is, yeah. All right, and video mode, obviously we will, holy shit, there's no fine mode. If you look at every clone video I've ever filmed, it always has a fine quality. Now we have high. Well, uh, do we have EIS? No, no, okay. Well, um, I'll go take some pictures and uh, I'll come back and let you know the results of it. Back in a moment. Okay, so it's safe to say here that we are recording at 4K at 60 FPS, which is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it has trouble picking up absolutely anything. And there is some sort of autofocus going on. Slightly. Alright, the front camera test. You have to press it about 16,000 times before it actually starts recording. But um, as you can see, it's... Uh really good. The sun's too bright, so that's stuffing everything up. Okay, so as per usual, I have not done the actual photo tests because it's night time, which is when I usually record. Why is the, <laughs> the video now crooked? It's just like, boop. Um, I've done some just test shots around here and stuff, and the shutter is extremely laggy. Every picture just looks like a painting, like a really shitty painting. Like It's just all smudged and blurry and... I mean, if it has a 2 megapixel camera, I will be genuinely surprised, but 16 megapixels, pfft. If any of you guys remember the Susan M5 phone that I looked at quite a while ago, it had like 256 meg of RAM and then like a Spreadtrum dual core processor or something like that. It was friggin' horrendous. This is on par with that. It's just, you know, it works. Now I understand why the original owner got rid of this phone is because they obviously bought it online because they thought, hey, that looks really good. You know, it says octa-core and all that sort of stuff. Seems cool. It's cheap. I'll buy it. They got it. They used it for about half an hour and went, oh, fuck this shit. Yeah, it's not exactly the best. So what I'm going to do is install the usual specification applications. That's a mouthful to say. And we're going to see what this thing is running. As a rough guesstimate, I'll say 512 mega RAM, 4 gig of storage, 2 megapixel camera, like a 480 by 800 display. All right, so let me go ahead and do all that and I'll be back in a second. All right, so all of the applications have been installed, but I just decided to quickly call the phone and it's kind of like, you know how people would put like a can or a cup and then on a piece of string to another cup and then talk into it and somehow it works? This is exactly what this sounds like, except that method that I mentioned would be probably better than this. So... I mean, you can use it for calls, it's all right, but it's far from fantastic. So we'll start with Antutu. All right, going into info here, brand is Alps, it's an Alps, fair enough. M10, 5.1, MT6572, Mali 400MP, 720p display, highly doubt that. 16 megapixel camera, four gigs of RAM, 32 gig storage, yep. No, it's a 10 core, it's not an octa core, it's a 10 core. Oh, there's two cores running. And one's just been put to sleep. I think it's a dual core. <laughs> More than a two point multi touch, come on. Not nah, two point multi touch. <laughs> Goody, 16 megapixel, 8 megapixel, 5.1. Android SDK version is 21. That corresponds to, I'm not too sure, I'm going to have to Google that. Okay, so 21 matches up with 5.0, Lollipop. So it could actually be running Lollipop. Fair enough. So let's try CPU-Z and see what that says. Okay, so 10 cores, but we've only got two cores running. So it's a good indication. M10, Alps, 4.66 inches, 720p, 4 gig with 3.5A. Oh, okay. API level there is 19, so that is KitKat. So Antutu, 
on this device, they've already made it work with Antutu to show everything fake on there, even the SDK version. So there you go. That is what it's running. It is running KitKat, but we'll check further. Uh, battery, thermal, sensors, all that sort of stuff. It's like three sensors. That's good. All right, try the next one. Okay, so this application here is the one that reveals most of the truth. If it doesn't, I'll use Droid Info. Go on. Dual core. 512 mega RAM. We'll see. Model M10. Yep. Help. Oh, shit. That was quick. Um, yep. MT6572. 4.4.2. KitKat. Yay. All right. System on chip. MT6572. That's what it reckons. Come on. Please scroll down. Please. MT6572 with two cores. In total internal memory, two gigabytes. Well, that's what I kind of said in the storage thing. I was like, three, six, nine, four, fifteen. Yeah. So two gig. <laughs> two gig. So that means RAM has to be 256. Oh, no, it's 512. <laughs> Shit. 512 meg of RAM. Whoa. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay. The screen resolution, though, 640 by 384, which seems about right, not 768 by 1280. All right, so in cameras, we have the rear one as 1.8 megapixels and the front one as 1.8 megapixels. So they might be exactly the same camera used in the front and back, maybe. Not too sure. But I'm pretty satisfied that I know what's going on here. But for the sake of it, I'm going to put Droid Info on here just to see what it says. And um, then we'll conclude this video and then rip it apart just to see what's inside of it. All right, I've had to put the stupid thing on life support because it was slowly dying. Uh, but I've got Droid Info installed, so let's have a look. And oh my god, what the display set? The display says it's 1280 by 768. What? That's not a seven. That's not a 720p display. That's a bunch of bullshit. It can't be a 720p display on this thing. Can't be. Surely. I'm back to this application again. And even though that says DP, 640 by 384, and the pixel says 768 by 1280, I'm not convinced. Why would they put a 720p display on this thing? All right, well, I'm going to tear it down and have a look and see what I can find, if there's any stickers or anything inside, which might possibly point me in the right direction. But at the moment, I'm I'm kind of stuck. It says 720p, but, but I just I, I don't know. All righty. Well, what I'm going to do is power off this thing, and I'm just going to open it up. See what I can see. That fingerprint's funny. Um, all right, shut it down. Yeah, I'd take off life support because um, the charger port is so dodgy on it. All right, well, let me quickly take it apart, um, and we'll just see what the motherboard looks like, and then conclude this video because it's gone on too long. So this is a first for me. Usually there's clips holding on the back cover, like once you undo the screws and stuff. No, this one just... They didn't even try. All right, so examining the insides of the device, it is just all a plastic build. This is just all plastic, which explains the cheapness, but we have little Wi-Fi board there, or antenna board, I should say. Uh, speaker there, which is the usual box style speaker, connected to this little flex ribbon here, which I would say, yeah, that probably will lead up into here somewhere. Okay, so the motherboard here is, it's actually a nice kind of color. I kind of like that. The vibration motor is up the top of the phone though. Bit strange. The uh, flash is just sitting there. The vibration motor is actually supposed to be there but they just put it there. That's fine. Um, the little camera on the back here. Here he is here. He's our little friend. That's our little camera there. I'll just sit him back down. Maybe a little bit more symmetrical than he was. All right, so this then connects to this massive jumble of solder here, which then connects to the front camera. Now the front camera, I think I can pull it off. Now I won't be able to pull the front camera out because the flash is attached right to this camera, but it looks slightly different than the one on the back here. Slightly. Alrighty, so we're tearing it down. Let's just see if it still works. Hopefully it does. Yep. It's still alive. Alright, so with all that being said and done, here are the specs here. Feel free to pause the video if you would like to. The only thing that I'm still not sure about is the display, but... Well, we'll just call it either a 720p or a 480 by 800 or something like that. For this phone, 
at the start of the year being 30 US dollars. It's not a bad thing. Look, if you wanted something stupidly cheap and you were only going to make calls, text, and maybe take a photo of a cat or something like that every now and again, this would be okay, I guess. Crappy battery life and really crappy build quality and all that sort of stuff. Ugh, you know, all these sort of things factor in for 30 bucks. 30 US are about $50 at the start of the year. Now they're like $58 and they've just, they've discontinued because all the newer clones have come in and wash this one away. A lot of people I reckon would have got scammed by this, would have seen it, seen, you know, that it has really good specs and stuff, would have purchased it and then found out it was a heap of garbage. And I think these people would have done the same thing, purchased it, sold it to one of my local porn stores and that's the end of that. And I've ended up with it. I'll give it a four out of 10. It does make calls, does receive calls, does take photos kind of, that's really it. But this is one of the welcome devices in its infancy. Well, actually, no, because it was kind of around the same time as the P20 Pro. I really don't know. <laughs> Whatever. That is fine. But anyways, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this review of this Mate 10 clone. That's just the M10 clone um, that I purchased for $15. And I've thoroughly enjoyed having a look at it and all that sort of stuff. It will now sit with the shelf of my other clones that I do have next to me. Um, some I do have to do reviews on and some that I've already done. Um, I'll link the playlist up here if you want to have a squeeze at all the older phone reviews and stuff. Some are really cringy and terrible because they were, you know, when I first started the channel. And some are, you know, the recent ones. So they're kind of better-ish. With all that being said though, I did purchase something on Wish just before I started filming. Let's just say, um, Apple fans, you better get ready for this one. So with that being said, take care, stay tuned for the next video, be good people, and I will see you all in the next video. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.